here's an Oscar contender for best hair and makeup. No joke. Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon Ravine Gulda, which is about pretty simple premise. We are in 1973 during the 19 days of the Yom Kippur War. I'm saying that completely wrong. I don't speak Hebrew. I'm so sorry. But this is talking about the Prime Minister Gulda Mir faced with the potential of Israel's complete destruction between them, Egypt, and Syria. So, did I like this movie? I thought it was a pretty good historical drama with interesting directional choices, if we put it that way, with an awesome performance by Helen Mira that you cannot tell it's her because of that fantastic hair and makeup. However, there are some issues with the historical relevance of it and smoking versus radiation. We'll talk about that. So some of the positives of the film. I do think the story is very interesting with Israel going against Egypt as well as Syria what the U.S. plays in it, what Russia plays in it. Not really the U, uh, EU, but maybe what African nations could have done in that area. Because honestly, me, I really don't know a lot about the Israel and Palestine, you know, conflict of how in 1947, apparently Israel was born, if I put it that way, and kind of scooted people out. I don't know how true that is. Is it that simple? I really doubt it. But I mean, I could be completely wrong. This is one historical history element I don't know anything about so guilty as charged going into this movie really much with a blank slate I do like I said I think the aesthetics are good it's a very interesting movie with the history however with the history elements with it I feel like they only picked things they wanted to show because I'm actually fascinated on the Egypt side on the Syria side why did they think they had to get involved in this conflict What was Saudi Arabia's element to it? What was Russia's element to it? Yes, I feel like they talked about it, but it was only like sprinkling the salt on the steak and not really giving me the meat of it. Like, yeah, you're giving me some of the flavor of the steak, but I want to know the nitty gritty of what is actually occurring. Yes, this does talk about the what's in the cabinet of Israel, with the prime minister, the generals involved, the secret cameras, the secret bugging devices, which let's be honest, every organization and every government agency has these. Everyone spies. So let's not talk about China spies. We spy. Russia spies. Uh, MI6 spies. Uh, nations spy. Period. Not end of subject. Japan, South Korea. It goes on and on and on. So do I fault them? No, because everyone freaking does it. I do think there are some interesting elements with birds. You're probably like, what are you talking about? Which I still don't know what the element and significance of these birds are. It starts off with like birds going through the sky and going through a chimney. And all of a sudden at the very end, it's like dead birds everywhere. Is that a metaphor for all the people dead in this conflict that occurred in 19 days? I don't know. I just know this part of the world and that timeline, like with Munich, Steven Spielberg movie. If you didn't know about that, fantastic freaking movie. Very underrated for Steven Spielberg. People need to watch that with Daniel Craig and Eric Bana. Fantastic freaking movie. But there's a lot of elements about Arabs and the Jews not just getting along at all. And it's just like, I don't I don't know how to fix it. I don't think there ever is or will be anything to fix it. I truly, truly don't. There's a lot of hatred with religion going on in the world right now. But I just think that movie itself is missing something. It's an hour and 40 minutes, and it does give some tension to it but there's just some creative weirdness with like smoke and bombs and I did like the realism of showing like these photos and what is occurring on a sky drone view when I was talking about radiation and smoke now and I'm kind of jumping all over the place just because this movie has the right just timeline or story But like I said, having the meat and potatoes just didn't feel like it connected. But now let's talk about radiation smoke. All right. A subplot, if you want to put it that way, is Helen Mirren's character, Gouda, has to go through a morgue to do radiation because of cancer. And of course, going through the morgue, every time she goes, bodies pile up just because of the war that's going on and the toll that is on her head. However, while in radiation room, she's smoking. So she's taking radiation to try to get rid of the cancer, but smoking 30 packs a day. That's exaggeration, but it felt like at least 36 a day. Okay, 
Why are you doing radiation? Serious question. If you refuse to change your lifestyle of smoking, just don't do the radiation because you're not putting two types of poisons in your body. Let's be freaking honest. So it's just like, I really don't feel sorry for people that have cancer that are like, you know, mask of the air, smoke, mask of the air. It's like, nah, I'm sorry. You're not changing your lifestyle. You're ruining the healthcare system. You're costing more taxpayer dollars. Pick one or the other. It's time to do that. So is that my cynical self? Maybe. But Gouda as a pitcher, I watched it. An hour 40 minutes went by, went by, and I said, okay, that's some good information. But overall, I felt like there was chunks of history just skipped over, and I really needed those p- missing puzzle pieces. So Gouda will receive, if I'm saying that right, not the cheese, right? A two and a half had a five full food taunts. It goes at 50%. Let's see the critics news scores gave this one. So you have the critics a 52% with 71. Audience score a 93%. That's pretty high. Critic consensus. Helen Mirror is typically masterful in a title role. But Golda never amounts to much more than a passable history lesson presented in a largely underwhelming biopic form. Actually, that's one of the more factual critic consensus I could think of. I don't know. Just something about it when the credits were rolling, I was just like, I I got stuff on screen, but I don't think I actually learned anything. And that's a huge, huge fault. Anyway, 53, 50, 93. Chase Talk with the Blue Futon. Like, Tom, subscribe. Home no things, Blue Tone Trophy. You Blue Tone take watch a great day. I don't care watch this today, tomorrow, week, around month, around year. For now, I truly love every single one of you. And when this is getting uploaded on a Tuesday, probably, fingers crossed, the weather ain't too bad. Right?